Hi everybody, it's Dr. Patricia Coglin, and I'm continuing in this series on common mistakes and pitfalls in the implementation of ISTDP. And I'd say probably this has got to be in the top, you know, two or three, um, is this tendency to rush ahead and press for feelings when the patient is still identified with and basically coming from a defensive posture. Now this can happen at many levels. One of the most obvious is defenses against emotional closeness, where you have a patient avoiding your eyes, their arms and legs are crossed, they're in no way present and engaged, and yet the therapist is charging ahead, asking about feelings uh, toward them or someone else. And I think you can see how you're putting the cart ahead of the horse there. Uh, defenses against closeness must always be addressed before specific defenses against specific feelings. And certainly, defense work always comes before feeling. So let's really talk about doing good defense work, really finishing that phase two where you're acquainting the patient with their defenses against their anxiety-provoking feelings, helping them see how reliance on those defenses actually creates and perpetuates their difficulties. And so therefore, if they want to be free of those, it would make sense to face these feelings. Right, so if you skip over this, you're often dealing with a very confused patient. You're pressing for feeling. They're telling you their thoughts or whatever it is that, again, they use to defend against those feelings, but are, in fact, mistaking for their feelings. So this is where you get not only confusion, but misalliance, and where the patient ends up feeling criticized and attacked because you have not helped them to distinguish between who they are, what they actually feel, and the defenses they use against those feelings. So I cannot urge you strongly enough to take time in phase two, once you have completed your initial inquiry, gone to a specific example, so that you can put the patient on the triangles, either in their current life with a precipitant or in the room with you. And as you begin to ask them about the feelings coming up, inevitably you're going to see them resort to defenses, externalization, minimization, rationalization, things like this. So you don't just ignore that and keep pressing for feeling, you point out, do you see that when I ask you about how you feel, you tell me about what you think. You give me opinions rather than feelings. Do you see that? You avoid your feelings by going to your head. Let's look at the consequences of that. So again, you're acquainting them with their defenses, the cost, and until the patient indicates that they see it and want to abandon it, right, pressing for feelings, again, is going to get you in a lot of trouble. So once again, just want to urge you <laughs> to adhere to the central dynamic sequence, do that inquiry, and do thorough defense work. It's not enough for you to see it. The patient has to see what they're doing to avoid their feelings and how that's causing their problem. So they're going to be motivated to give it up and actually have an honest look at their feelings. Then the two of you will be on the same page about going forward. And you're not going to promote either a power struggle between you and them, right? Or worse, a misalliance and a breakdown. So I hope this is helpful to you, and I'll see you next week.